Welcome back to part three of this Getting Started with Power Mill guide. Today we will cover Automatic Feature Recognition, or AFR for short, as well as standard and vortex wrapping strategies. We begin where we left off at the end of lesson two. The only difference here is that I've created these two tools just to save a little time. So we have a 50 and a 16 millimeter tip radius tool. From here, we can come up to our ribbon toolbar and select model area clearance from our shortcut menu. I'm going to start by giving this toolpath a name. From the drop down menu, we can see the different styles of roughing that we can utilize within PowerMill. For the moment, I'm just going to select the default, which is offset all. Now I'm going to come down to my thickness section, which is where I can specify how much stock I want to leave on the part. By clicking the thickness button, we can expand out this section so that we can define different stock amounts for horizontal and vertical faces. Now I'm going to define my step over. And finally, my step down. Once I've done that, I can then press calculate. The system has flagged up a warning message stating that the toolpath plunges into the stock during this toolpath, potentially damaging the tool. A really useful feature to help you avoid any costly mistakes. I'm just going to select OK for the moment and we'll correct this issue in a second. So there are a couple of problems that we need to address with this toolpath. Firstly, we can see that we have some fresh air cuts on top of the part. Obviously the top of this part has already been machined in a previous operation, so we want to get rid of those. Also, um, we need to deal with the plunging problem that the system informed us about before. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back up to my toolpath, right click on that, come back into our settings. From here, I'm going to press the recycle button so that I can go ahead and modify this toolpath. Then I'm going to come up to my limit section as we did previously. And I'm going to define the maximum height for this toolpath as the top of the model. So if I just hit calculate there, we're still going to get that error message. Just hit OK on that for the moment. Now we can see those fresh air cuts have been eliminated. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my leads and link section. I'm going to come into lead in. Again, I need to recycle the toolpath. And under lead in, I've currently got it set to none. From the drop down, we can see all of the different options we have here for creating lead ins. For the moment, I'm just going to select ramp. If I go down to my lead out section, currently we've got nothing set. Um, however, if I use this button at the bottom here, it will actually allow me to copy the information that I put in the lead ins into the lead outs. I press that. You can see this has now been populated and press calculate. From here, I can simulate the toolpath to make sure that it's correct. So as we've done before, right click on our operation, simulate from start, it's gonna take us back into the simulation environment. Then using my mode, I can go back into rotatable. So I've already got the toolpath saved um, with the original operation, the top face operation having already simulated. So now I can just press play. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it, come back to no image. The next thing I'm going to look at is creating features. Before I go ahead and do this, I'm just going to turn off our tool and our toolpath just so we can see everything a little bit more clearly. So now I'm going to come over to my feature group section and I'm going to select detect features. This will allow me to dynamically move around the model and pick features directly from it. So I'm going to pick this top feature to start with. Press accept. And we've now created a feature. Over on our Explorer, we can expand this out and we can see the different feature groups. At the moment, we only have the one. 
Now that we have a feature group created, we can use this to create a toolpath. Coming up to my home tab, select a new toolpath. This time from my feature machining section, I'm going to select feature area clearance. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, give this toolpath a name as always. Now I'm going to come up to my tool section. You may notice we've still got um, the 50 mil diameter tool selected. So from the drop down, I'm going to select the 16. Now coming back to my feature area clearance section, I'm going to look at some of the different styles of roughing that we can utilize. So we've already looked at offset all. Offset all. Now I'm going to select vortex. So vortex is Paramil's high speed roughing operation. Coming down, I'm just going to turn off my thickness. So I'm not going to leave any stock on. I'm just going to do this directly to size. My step over, I'm going to set that to say 8 mil with a 10 mil step down. And we can press calculate. Close that down. And there we have our high speed roughing operation. And finally, we can simulate this final tool path to check that everything's okay. And we can store it. This concludes part three. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.